It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Yeah, this is the one where I think it starts to get, I don't want to say fun, but it does kind of start to get fun here because you start to believe that you have a plan in place. You know what you're doing, why you're doing it, and where you are headed to. And so we wanted to talk about, okay, what does someone who is in the strategy phase look like? Like, what are some traits that would describe them? Well, here's the first one. They're saving 20 to 25% for retirement. They have understood that, man, I understand that wealth building is composed of <clears throat> discipline, money, and time. And what I'm going to do is for the rest of the time that I can save, I'm going to have discipline to live on less than I make, and I'm going to save 20 to 25% for the future. Yeah. The second thing they understand is <clears throat> they have some clearly defined financial goals, and odds are they've probably written those things down. They've probably put on paper, hey, this is what I want to be doing. This is where I want to be heading. They know they're not just letting life happen. They know exactly where they are trying to go. The third thing is that your finances are on autopilot. What do you mean, Brian, when you say your finances are on autopilot? Well, I just want you to automate so much of your life because there, there's so many opportunities to where this is actually, remember I said wealth creation is surprisingly simple, mm -hmm. but far from easy. This is the part where we can actually make it easier for you. Don't let yourself get distracted with all the consumerism mm -hmm. and the lifestyle expanding every time you get a pay raise. If you will be proactive and auto put everything on autopilot because you can pretty much automate how much goes into your cash reserves every month how much you're putting in out of your monthly payroll to ensure you're getting your employer match and maximizing the free money how much is going into all your other retirement savings all that stuff can be updated automatically so you set it forget it and focus on living your best life because you've already checked the box of saving 20 to 25 percent of your gross income and when you do that you put yourself in this place in this position and Brian I'm gonna give you credit for this because I think this is the one that you came up with this is a Brian Preston money guy trademark you're using forced scarcity to your advantage. You become comfortable living in this world of, man, I always feel broke, not because I'm broke, but because I have my money going where it needs to go, when it needs to go there, and I have it doing that first so I know that I'm building to what my ultimate financial goals are. So forced scarcity is one of my words I use because I do like the thought of creating self-imposed boundaries for myself that, so that every time I do get a pay raise, or more money is coming in. And uh, now look, I do let some of that go into lifestyle. I'm not a miser. I'm not Ebenezer Scrooge who's making sure that I'm telling my my, my spouse to push down the the the, the heater to 62 because we're saving <laughs> put, a few more a bucks. On. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. But I am saying that as, as good things in your life happen career-wise or income streams, if you have some alternative income streams, I want you to create boundaries and force saving so that even though more money's coming in, you don't feel the weight or feel like you can go do anything right. and everything without at least paying respect to, why don't we increase our savings? Because that is something we've often talked about, Bo. A lot of people, you will get inspired. You'll find the Money Guy Show. You'll hear about compounding growth with the 88, 88 times over. You'll find out about Roth IRAs and you'll say, you know what? I could do $500 a month into my Roth today. IRA and I'm going to set it up. And when you're 23 years old, when you figure out this show and you start saving $500 a month, I want to fast forward five years in the future. But now instead of making like $45,000, you're making a hundred grand and you find out that you never changed you it never from five hundred dollars a month. Right. That, that, that is not what I consider for scarcity in action. You need to be expanding what you're doing for your financial life and not just focusing on letting lifestyle increase. That's a big risk. So I think one of the things that's interesting is one of the very first things when you get, when you get into the strategy phase, we say that you need to be saving 20 to 25% of your gross income. Mm -hmm. And so one of the questions we all want to answer is, okay, well, how do I stack up to my peers? How yeah. are other folks doing this? How are other people handing this? Well, look at this data, and this is from bankrate.com. They found that the overall savings rates for Americans, now this includes all money saved, so not just for retirement savings, this is like money going into like savings accounts and otherwise, 5% uh, of respondents said they don't know how much they're saving. Well, if you don't know how much you're saving, <laughs> what does that mean, Brian? You're probably in that, that save nothing 21%, that save but nothing. you got a little bit of embarrassment so going on. 21% say they save nothing. 20% of Americans say they save 5% or less. 28% say they save between 6 and 10%. 
10% say they save between 11 and 15. Only 16% save more than 15% of their income. And remember, we said that to be a true financial mutant, if you want to move through the levels of wealth, you ought to be saving 20 to 25%. Only 16% of folks in this country are even hitting that 15% mark. We got a savings problem. We definitely have a savings problem. And I want people, because I don't want y'all to just think, well, guys, what did y'all do? Did y'all see this number and you saw 15 and you hear other commentators saying 15 and you go, well, you know what? If they got 15, I'm going to do 25. (laughs) That's not how we do things here at The Money Guy. You guys know we are analytically driven. We kind of nerd out on stuff. So we actually wanted to open up the curtains and show you some some data and some research we have compiled to show you how did we come up with 25%. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. So let's look at like a very sort of simple case study. Let's assume that when you invest, you can earn a conservative 6% rate of return. And let's say that for all of your working years, as your income increases, it goes up by about 1.5% per year. And let's say that you want to retire at age 65, right? right? That's kind of the thing that we're laying out. Well, if you're a 20-year-old and you figure out that I can start saving 25% of my gross income, when you get to 65 and it's time for you to retire, you can actually count on your portfolio providing 167% of your pre-retirement income. That's right. You took a pay raise to retire from your portfolio. Well, this is this is where we give some grace in this. This is why it's 20 to 25%, because mm-hmm. I know the majority of Americans, even people who are financial mutants watching the show, because I'm going to be self-confessional here. Sure. I wasn't saving 25% of my income at, at 20. 20. I wasn't even investing at 20 sure. yet. So that's why we give you a little grace that you don't have to be at 25% at 20. You'll see how this all lines up here in a so second. So maybe you're like, Brent, maybe you get through college you get the, and you say, I'm going to start at 25. Well, right. even if you start at 25 years old and you can start saving 25%, by the time you get to 65, if you do that, you'll be able to replace 131% right. of your pre-retirement income. Again, you're, you're, if you work all the way till 65, it's likely you're taking a pay raise. If you wait until 30, and this is where the magic number comes from. If you're a 30-year-old and you just start on this journey and you save 25% of your gross income, by the time you get to 65, you would be able to replace 100%. It's actually 102% of your pre-retirement income. There it is. There's where the number is. That's where the 25% comes from. And I think that's so powerful because, and by the way, if you're somebody watching this and you're 35 years of age or even 40 years of age and you're like, oh no, if that's the, the if that's the break even point of why they do 25%, realize a lot of indicators are you don't have to come up with 100% right. of your retirement income when you actually break into financial independence is because there are other sources. You might have pensions, Mm -hmm. you might have social security and some other things that are going to help supplement what you spend in retirement. That's why there is even more opportunity for those people who have not quite started before age 30. Yeah. If you don't start until 35, you could still replace almost 80% of your pre-retirement income. And if you don't start until 40, you can still replace almost 60%. Well, the reason we say figure out 20 to 25% as early as possible is because the earlier you figure it out, the more time you have, the more your money can grow for you, and the more options that you give yourself later in life. Perhaps you don't want to work till 65. Maybe you want to retire at 60 or 55 or 50. The earlier you can figure this out, the more options you'll give yourself later in life. So, Bo, we, we've been talking about saving, and this is something that I think, I'll just say it is a criticism of us sometimes, because mm-hmm. when I talk about saving, I just assume, and maybe this is the financial mutant in me, that we're putting that money to work. Mm-hmm. But yep. there is, so, but we do need to make sure we clarify our language to talk about saving versus investing. Yeah, so this is something, Brian, and I want to get, again, I want to give you tons of credit. Man, I've learned a lot from <laughs> you, it sounds like. <laughs> Um, probably all the, that storytelling. The best illustration that I've ever heard from this mm-hmm. was an illustration you give uh, between your parents and your in-laws and just how powerful the difference in saving versus investing can because you can be a great saver and still not do the things that we talk about on this show. There is another component of it, and that's exactly what you said, putting your money to work. Well, I think back to my childhood. My parents, because I've told you guys, the three components of wealth creation is discipline is the first part. That leads creates margin that then leads to money, the money that can be invested, and that invested money over time turns into something really incredible through compounding growth. 
I have parents and I grew up in a household where money was not wasted. I, I attribute a lot of my skill set with being good with money. And if you talk to any of my childhood friends, they will confirm that I was always the guy that had the coupons yep. and did everything. So money was not wasted in my household. But there's a huge separation in that wealth creation list of three key components was really the money never got invested. That's it right. just got saved because my parents' idea of invest of really of building money was saving money and then putting that into mm-hmm. CDs. And saving is the hardest part. They got the hardest part right. So I wanted to, because y- y- you guys know, I've shared on it before, my father passed away in December of 2000. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's kind of hard to believe we're quickly approaching his 21 years mm-hmm. that he, he hasn't been with us anymore. So I've had a lot of time to self-reflect on what were some of those key years of his life professionally saving and creating. And it really was probably the the Mm mid-80s all the way to when he passed away in the year 2000. And what I think about is when Jennifer and I got together, um, I met her parents, who were also really good with saving money. But there's a key difference between my parents and her parents and the fact that her parents, they actually invested the money. Mm -hmm. Her father, I, I can remember us having many discussions on, he bought Fidelity Magellan when Fidelity Magellan was like, Whoo, The bee's knees. Man, it was you're the big pretty boy. happy about that. Meanwhile, my parents, remember, they're cash CD type investors. And I'm going to blow your mind. This period that we covered here, my parents were making greater than mm-hmm. five and a half to 6%, depending upon the years you're looking at with CDs. Right now, we're all looking at our CDs and our savings, you know, and what our banks are paying, and we're like, man, I'm only getting 0.3% yep. or a point, you know, or half a percent on my savings account. How in the world? That, that sounds great. If somebody mm-hmm. could give me five and a half, six percent, I'd take it heartbeat. all day long. No, you wouldn't, because there's always this opportunity when you invest. There's what's called an equity risk premium, so that even when you go through high inflationary periods, like we're experiencing right now, just like we experienced back in the early 80s, late 70s, You will notice when people say, I want to lock in my CD rates, you won't because what actually happens in reality is the years that CD rates are really high, your equity returns because of the equity risk premium where you're getting a benefit from taking that risk of investing the money is going to be tremendous. So we actually did a case study where we said, let's take somebody who puts two families, each put $50,000 a piece into an investment to see what that turns into from this 1985 to 2000 period. And here are the two things they did. One, just put in the Fidelity Magellan Fund. This isn't hypothetical. This is an actual fund that you could have invested in over that time period. And the other family just did one-year CDs, continued to renew one-year CDs so they got interest rate increases through time. Well, here's what happens in that 50000 Over this 15-year period from 1985 until the end of 2000, the CD investor would have turned that 50000 into almost $120,000. Yeah. That's still, I mean, you, they, the money grew, there was compounding interest that took place. It did grow. The one who figured out how to invest and not just save, though, they were able to turn their $50,000 into almost $836,000. And this is just over a 15-year time period. What you do with your money matters. You want to figure out how you can make your money work even harder than you do. Saving is the hard part. Don't let investing be the part that prevents you from actually building up your army of dollar bills. I don't want us to go on too much of a sidebar because I do want to cover how do you know you're doing strategy right. But a lot of people are going to watch this and find the money guy for the money guy show for the first time. And they go investing. I don't. I just don't know what to do. I don't mm-hmm. come from money. Sure. And we have we have come up with a way to make this incredibly simple. What should somebody, if they're brand new to investing, they open their first Roth IRA to get that tax-free growth, get the 88 times over. How do they do this, Bo? Yeah, I think a great thing that everyone can use, uh, and it's because technology has allowed this now, are what are called target retirement index funds. Basically, what you do is all you have to do is decide what year do you think you might want to retire. Is it 2040? Is it 2045, 2050? And you buy the fund that corresponds to that year. And a bunch of fund companies have these. There are Fidelity Freedom Funds. There are Vanguard Target Retirement Funds. There are a number of others. What I love about this is there are only two questions you have to answer. That's great. When do I think I want to retire? And how much money can I save? You do those two things, 
and let the rest take care of itself. Because what will happen is as we get closer and closer to that retirement date, those funds will naturally adjust for you. So you're not having to guess, do I buy, do I sell, should I, how do I, all you focus on is how much am I saving, when do I want to retire, and watch your army of dollar bills grow. Once again, creating wealth is incredibly simple, mm-hmm. but yet it is so not easy. But you've just shared a huge tool. If somebody, if you don't come from money, you don't know how to invest, don't let somebody try to spin your head to make this overly complex. Take advantage of those two questions Bo just asked. How much can you save and invest? And when do you need the money? An indexed target retirement funds because they're super low cost. They don't have commissions. That's going to be your bridge to get you to the next level of creating wealth and abundance. All right. So if you're listening to this, you're like, okay, what are some things I can think through? How do I know if I'm doing the strategy stage right? Uh, Here's number one. You have a full three to six month emergency fund. You're working through your financial operations and you've got a full emergency fund. You're now starting to think about how can I not just save taxes presently, but how can I save taxes over the lifetime of my investing life using tools like Roth IRAs and health savings accounts to effectively put your dollars to work. And then you're working towards that 25% of your gross income for retirement. We all know that life happens. You know, maybe we start out and we're single and we're saving great, but then we get married and then we have a kid and then we buy a house and our savings rate has to drop. You have that constant motivation in the back of your mind saying, you know what, I am going to get to that 25% as fast as I can and do it for as long as I can. And you'll be amazed at what the financial journey looks like if you do that. I think a lot of people, because strategy is so important, you want to make sure you feel like, hey, I don't know what I don't know. How do I know I'm doing this appropriately? We have created the financial order of operations. Yep. And look, there's a free deliverable. Go to moneyguy.com slash resources. You can download this exact same thing that I'm holding up here. But there's also a better resource. If you get into that that free deliverable and you go, yeah, but I need details. I need some meat. I need uh, to know what happens in this different scenario. Go to learn.moneyguy.com. We actually have a course that will accelerate that wealth creation process. Look, I don't like selling stuff. I'm just going to straight up tell you, but I believe so strongly that this truly will speed up your abundance building process that I I would be doing you wrong if we didn't Mm -hmm. push this thing.